DJs. Welcome everybody, here we are. Novius Photo Success, my name is Rob, co-founder of Novius Photo Success. My name is James, also co-founder of Novius Photo Success. My name's longer though. So I'm a lot taller than you, look at that. I know. <laughs> when are you gonna grow up, I'm man? I'm a lot older than you too. <laughs> yeah. I do not ever plan to grow up. Nope. Nope. Don't grow up. I'm only 26. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> It's so, a trap! It's a trap! Yeah, birthdays, birthdays. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to this episode of No BS Photo Success, uh, No BS TV. This and, is uh, episode uh, number 426. Just go find the other 425 in the farm. They're there somewhere. You just got to look for them. So I'm looking at our little menu here and I'm wondering, well, what did I, what did HB mean? <laughs> oh, happy birthday! Oh. It's his birthday yesterday. I could have came up with a few other things for you. It's <laughs> okay. Yes, it was my birthday yesterday. Yeah, we're going to talk about what James did on his birthday momentarily. Are we going to talk about it now? We'll talk about it later. Sure. Sure. Okay, whatever. I can talk about it now. Talk about it later. It's all good. Tell us what you did for your birthday. Uh, James turned okay. 39. I turned 39 yesterday. So he's 39 in a day. In a day. So uh, I got this idea from Kelly Scotia, Bon Jovi girl, because uh, her and her sister did this. Cool. So yesterday was my 39th birthday, and uh, for me, my birthdays are all just, it's just a regular day. Usually I don't do anything special. It's always been like that. Uh, but yesterday I did what we called 39 random acts of kindness. So we went around town, and I literally just, we went and did random acts of kindness. You know, we handed out flowers to an old age home. We handed out cold bottles of water. We bought gift cards and handed them out. Yeah, you know, it was a it was a very rewarding uh, experience, you know, and uh, you know what goes cool. around comes around, right? So, it wasn't about me, and uh, it was about everybody else, and just random good deeds, and uh, you know, it's one of those birthdays that I'll remember forever because uh, you know we touched a lot of people, and uh, you touched know, people. Yeah, I touched them. Uh, we got in trouble for that. The cops came in, and I had to make a donation to Crime Stoppers. But uh, but you know what was funny is uh, one like uh, one time uh, I was bagging, carrying out groceries for people from the grocery store and uh, people got really offensive uh, yeah a few people they were defensive like, defensive I should say and uh, they were just like no 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 you're no you're not carrying out my groceries it's just that's because you're like this really creepy looking guy well you know I had a big long black trench coat and I wore my hat and sunglasses and I <laughs> said excuse me yeah, you, know, yeah but, you can't do that yeah but uh, if you want to see everything that we did you can go to my blog uh, com slash blog and blog. Uh, I put, uh, I put some pictures and we documented it. A little it. off center. All right. Now, the one reason I did document it, and I posted everything on Facebook, is my goal was to. Uh, I don't like it when you're behind me. We're the same height. There we are. All right, keep talking. <laughs> uh, the reason I posted on Facebook and the blog is uh, you know, I want to um, hopefully inspire other people, which happened. It kind of snowballed, and a lot of people were doing uh, random acts of kindness on my behalf uh, and stuff like that. A couple of, one person made a donation to the Sudbury SPCA. And uh, yeah, it was a great thing. I highly suggest awesome. everybody to go out and do that at least for one of your birthdays. It's a great way to get out in the community, meet a lot of people, and help a lot of people. So, well, I was waiting for James to come around my house and retile my roof, but he wasn't showing up. That wasn't a random act of kindness. No. <laughs> that was a random act of Stop generosity. Stop poking me with that thing. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, uh, I just want to talk real briefly about the No BS Photo Success online forum. There's some really cool threads going on. I just want to bring up one right now. There's one called uh, 100, 100 Ways for Better Success? No, Marketing. Marketing. 100 Marketing Ideas. And people are adding their ideas. That's I good think thread. we're up to like number 50 something. Something like that. Yeah, it's, it's a good thread because there's some yeah. really good ideas in there. So if you're not a member of No BS Photo Success, sign up and you can have access to that plus like like an amazing amount of information, people, tutorials, manuals, etc., etc., in the forum. So somebody sent an email saying, you know, can you explain why our forum's different? Somebody did. Yeah. So and why is uh, it different? We just are. We just are. That's it. We just are. No BS. Photo success. I mean, you got to try it out to see why we're different. But other we are. Other than the fact that we got a lot of a lot of resources, and there's a there's a great amount of people that are very willing to help and there's no attitude that's I think one of the big ones is the culture We've I think the main thing too is that 95% of the members are heavily medicated <laughs> we taught, think, we taught them well I think that helps. <laughs> <laughs> and we are the main drug dealers so I want to talk ah, about stop pulling I want to talk about my, my new toy <laughs> okay we're gonna talk about my new toy actually I got two new toys okay I got a new 70 to 200 and a d800 and I bought a 105 micro lens. 
Wait, wait. Uh, macro. Uh, Nikon calls it a micro. Oh. They had to be different. Okay. So it is a micro lens. Yeah, it's cool. It shoots tiny. Sorry. Micros yeah, micro. micro. It's called micro. Microscopic little wee Nikon things. calls them micro. Canon calls them macro. Uh, you know, whatever. Tomato, tomato. What's the and it's a nano crystal coat super lens. Costs about eight hundred dollars. It's a one hundred five, two point eight micro. Don't drop it. <laughs> I had the sixty macro and I sold it, and I wanted to have the one hundred five because of the extra, the extra focal length. And I use it primarily on weddings for detail shots. Plus, when I've been using it for shooting babies, I get in close to some of the you know nose and ears and lip shots and face shots of the baby. Nano crystal coat. Nano crystal coat. And I'm going to actually, I uh, haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I'm going to be using it on families. Uh, I really like to use a 70 to 200 on families, but for larger families, I'm going to try the 105. I, it's, leg lens. it's legendarily sharp. It's amazingly sharp. Uh, it's the one of the, uh, it's been around for decades, the 105 lens from Nikon. And uh, we'll try it out. So I'm, I'm going to use it for that. Can Maybe I make a suggestion. Go. You got a suggestion. Jason yeah. You know what? Because you've got this beautiful lens, nice glass, brand new, not a scratch on it, right? And the, I would actually just go get a, uh, a clear skylight, skylight filter just yeah. to put on there. I did that for my lenses, and I noticed it's. You know, you look at this filter, and it's like dirty and scratch, and it's like, hey, you know what? But Is my lens dirty? No, it's not. So if you want to keep it in pristine shape, don't get like a polarizer. Just get a, yeah. a regular. Well, yeah, polarizer. You know, we used to have that argument, like, you know, you pay all this money for glass, and then, you know, you put a filter on it. I'm not going to do it. I've never believed in putting any kind of glass in the front of my lens. Do you really put stuff oh, in yeah. there? Okay. Especially, well, most yeah. of my commercial industrial, I have to. Well, yeah, yeah. You're shooting in some crappy environment. Like, a lot but of dust, you know, a lot of, uh, you're underground. How many feet? Five, six, seven, eight, six, ten thousand feet six, underground? Six, six feet. Underground. Six feet underground. <laughs> I'm doing grave. I'm doing gravesite <laughs> photography now. So you're only. Oh, that's the new book you're coming out with. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I just don't like anything in front of my lens other than a lens hood. I'm a big believer in lens. Get the shade. Get the sun. Get the light ambient light off the front of my lens. Other than that, I've just never really put any kind of filters. Hold on. It's a bit of a lie. I do have two filters that I do use. I have a neutral density and I have a polarizer, but I use them for certain shots. What does the neutral density do, Rob? Two, two, uh, two f-stops and it slows down the, uh, there it is, it darkens it by two stops. That. And that's for when I've got the camera on the tripod and I want to extend like, you know, an f-16 and I want to get like a, a, a long exposure of like a water going by or something like that. So certain applications. Polarizer I will use. This will fit on my 70 to 200. It will fit on my 24 to 70. It will not fit on the 14 to 24 because that's not a lot of glass. I don't know if it will fit on the 105. I'll have to try it out. But I use it on the 24 to 70. Typically when I get lots of sky in shot. Cool. Anyways, it's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about my new toys. Rob! You are my father. No, there's a disturbance in the force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James is going to talk about his uh, 70 to 200 as yeah, well. Yeah, here, here it is. There, I talked about it. Okay, first thing I want to talk about, though, quickly is uh, I had an older 70 to 200 Nikon. And of course, Jeff over at Photo Creative, photocreative.com, a little plug there. I got to tell you something real quick. Okay. <laughs> I was in Toronto over the weekend just for a little holiday, and we were at Starbucks on Young Street, Main Street. We're having a cappuccino, it's about one in the afternoon. This guy, and there's a lot of, a lot of people walking by, and this guy walks by, he's got two of those mirrorless cameras, he's taking pictures, and there's a kid there listening to his headphones with his pack sack, and he stops, and he takes a picture of this kid without the kid noticing, and he takes off. It was Jeff. Really? <laughs> <laughs> this Jeff from Photo Creative. Yeah, that's funny. You know, the guy who I buy my camera So off. he didn't get, did you flag him down and say, hey? No, he was gone. Oh. I was like, that was Jeff. So I should have got him. And so had Jeff him. likes taking pictures of unsuspecting kids? <laughs> oh, he's out trying these new cameras. You know, Jeff, Jeff does that. He actually field tests all the equipment. So yeah. when you go in to buy it, you get a, an unbiased opinion. I mean, he sells you the right camera and right lens. But he tells people. me the same thing. Every time a new camera comes out or a new lens, you he's got this. <laughs> you got to have this. It's unbelievable. This. There's nothing like it. And I said, yeah, sure. You said that last time. So I kind of like filter that out. But he's a really, really good guy. If you have somebody that you deal with for your cameras, it's really important because, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, have an issue, I call them up, 
I sense that stuff, stuff is broken, he brings it to Nikon. He literally brings it to Canon or Nikon for you and says, here, yeah. this is. That's what I like about that. The That's why I like that customer service. The last time I had an issue with, I don't have it with me, but you know the lens barrel here on my 72, uh, 24 to 70, it broke. The rubber came off? No, the actual plastic oh. just kind of snapped off. There's a bunch of screws. And he brought it and no charge. Cool. Okay, talk about your toys sir. So, yeah, focus. Anyways, um, the reason I bought a new 70 to 200 and replaced my old one was I got a new D D800 8. super camera. <laughs> That's what they're called. Eight Nikon 800 super camera. Which I love, by the way. And I got the two D700s that I've had before. So uh, I've got three cameras now. So uh, I feel like I got lots of cameras. You need to have a portrait taken with you now holding your camera. <laughs> <laughs> I love those shots. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Let's tell people about that. James, one time, he always used to make fun of people holding their cameras, their bio shots. So he had a picture once with a log, birch tree log. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense whatsoever. Don't ask. Did you do one with a fish? I did one with a fish one time. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do some more. Those were fun. Uh, so if, you, if we see a picture of you holding your camera, we're going to pull the I can put that on the inside of my coffee table book on paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> uh, so I got the new D800 in and uh, super large files. So it's just like, man, wow. Does it shoot uh, JPEG? Yeah, <laughs> it shoots JPEG. It's all I shoot. And Do uh, I have ISO 400? When, when I shoot a wedding with this, I have to turn, I turn the file size down to small. You do that too, eh? Yeah. Because it's like 14 megabytes. My last wedding, I shot, uh, I turned all my file sizes down to medium. Somebody was like, well, why don't you shoot the largest file you possibly can? You don't have to. You don't have to, really. So the 70 to 200, my old one, was not working on the D800. It was working still on the older cameras. And I was like, ah, oh, I okay, can't do that on purpose. Well, it was working, but intermittently. And I can't deal with that. So I put it on the forum, and I put it on Kijiji. Sold it within minutes. $700. Sold my D700, $7,750, 7, sold it. You gotta love Kijiji. For all Americans out there, I don't think they know what Kijiji is. I don't right? think so. Kijiji is like an online It's like Craigslist. Yeah, it's like Craigslist. It's a guy. You throw from, something up there and it's usually gone within the day. If it's a lens, yeah. especially. Anyways, I was looking at this old lens and thinking, you know, should I replace it? Not this one, my other 70 to 200. And the rubber was all worn out and falling off, and it was it was like an old beat up car with a good engine still working. The glass was impeccable, which is another argument for not getting. It was just cosmetics. But was yeah, it was just wear and tear. The paint job was crap. And I was looking at it. I was thinking, you know what? This this lens made me a lot of money. I thought I had it what seven years? Yeah, that's like mine too. I did a this, quick calculation. This lens here is my very first 7200. It's made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've had this for so bloody long. It's like brand new. Yep. I've had this thing for so long. You treat your lenses well. I treat them a little bit. No, I don't treat them as rough as you. you. But you shoot yours a lot more than me. You're shooting a lot. So. But you're right. Like, they make us a lot of money. So it's just a tool. And I use it productively, fiscally responsibly. So I had to sell this stuff to get the extra money because otherwise I'd have to face my wife and go, here's what I did in order to buy the new toys. But they're not really toys, they're tools. Tools. They're not really toys, they're tools. That's a good headline. They're not really toys, they're tools. <laughs> so that's your favorite it's, lens? It's funny if you talk about the file sizes. I'm going to come back to that. Cause it made, Let's talk cause, about file Because it made me think. I'm going to put my camera down. You know, you, you drop your Somebody's file. Somebody's going to get hurt. You drop your file size. And now, how many megapixels is that camera? 36. They're huge. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. You know, we drop our file sizes down. You drop yours down to medium. I drop mine down to, like, the smallest uh, large. Uh, Which is I, what? I don't know. I have no idea. About 12 megabytes? Not even that. I think, the, I think the files that come off the camera are on 7 megabytes. Okay. Okay, but anyways, my point is, is that... You know, people are saying, well, Jesus, you can't use that. You need bigger file sizes. But now, how long have we been shooting digital? A long time, right? 2001. We've never had anybody, you know, had, we've never had problems getting 30, 40, 50 inch prints. Never. Now, four years ago, I was using a 5, you know, what, a 5D and a, what, a 60D or something like that. 60D. But anyways, 
which is half the resolution of the 5D Mark II. Yes. So if I can shoot a file size like that and get perfect prints, this is basically cutting this down to half. It's the same file size as I was using back then, where I had no problem. Yeah, I know. People get cut so, up. They get cut up, and they get cut up. It's just it's, it's it's silly. It's funny. Yeah, it is silly. Exactly. So oh, you got a good point there. You know what I mean? It's so on the, it's on the tip of your head, but <laughs> you got a good point. <laughs> but uh, you know, okay, I've got to tell you a little quick story. The guy who I sold the D seven thousand to last week was just a young guy. He called me up, says I'll buy it. Came by with the cash, and we were shooting the breeze. And I told him my story about my first digital camera, which was a D three thirty. D thirty. Yes, D30. Two, two, that's one I had. 3.2 3 megapixels. 3.24 megapixels. And I went into my garden shed, which is right attached to my studio, and I said, look at this picture. I had archived, sort of in the corner, stored away, some old 30-inch prints that I'd taken. The little baby. Little baby, and, and I pulled this out, and I said, look, here's some of the shots that I used to put on display, shot with that camera. They were stunning. Yeah, I was looking at them, going, man, the detail is amazing. And that was like a 3.24 megapixel. 3.24. You know, it's just, it's... Uh, you know, so, for me, when it comes to buying new cameras, it's never about the size. The only thing I look for in a new camera, the only thing that interests me when a new camera comes out is ISO. How's, oh, really? the, how, how, how's, the, how's the film grain on that? The, the grain. You know right, what right? I mean? The that's noise, it. The I, could, I could care about any of the, the goo gahs and bells Goo-gahs. and whistles and stuff like that. Just, that's, <laughs> that's all I look for. I'm going to bring that up next time I go to a camera store. Tell me about your goo gahs. Tell me about your goo gahs. <laughs> <laughs> that camera. I'm. Uh, I won't buy. Uh, I was telling a photographer, my assistant, there on the weekend. I do not buy a new camera. To my one breaks. Because I mean, it's working fine now. Or until the D800 comes out. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, I wanted a D800 because the D700 was so awesome. But my two D700s are starting to actually break down. There's little things. It's like it's like when you have a car, and after six years, you know, the, the damn TV, uh, TV, the radio knob is broken, and or this is broken. Little things. You know what I noticed with my cameras, with What's the that? Canon cameras. What I noticed a big difference between my new camera and then my other camera, which is now a backup. It really taste the butt cut. It's the LCD screen. You know, it's either the a little bit faded, oh. or you know, it's. You know, it's just got a little hazy. It's not as crisp because with the newer cameras, you get those nice crisp LCDs. But really, that's just, that's again, that's cosmetics. That's yep. not changing the quality of it. It's all about functionality. And James used to say back in the day, he used to say, it's not the size of your file that counts. It's what you do with it. It's what you do with it. Exactly. All right, I want to talk about something else and a couple things here. I'm doing a studio newsletter for my studio. Uh, direct mail going to my actual list of past clients. Okay. Uh, I haven't done one of those in a couple of years, frankly, because I just got lazy. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, oh, I, I like doing them. I really, really enjoy doing them. Uh, I, I just do them in Photoshop. I create layers. I don't need InDesign. I don't need anything else. And I just create layers. I put the text in there, and I just start throwing stuff. I put a lot of community notes. I put a lot of personal stories. I put a lot of past gallery images. I put some whatever is going on in the studio. And of course, let me show you what I'm doing. 5000cards.com. Special edition. They have a sale on right now until the end of June, 25% off. So you can get a full, full color flyer. I'm gonna get a thousand of them printed up. My newsletter is gonna be like this. This, not, this is not my newsletter. Uh, but it's going to be like this. I'm going to get it. It's almost like my newsletter is 90% done. And I'm going to include in there a sheet of paper. And by the way, when you include a sheet of paper, <laughs> print on both sides. sides. Ink is cheap. Empty space is wasted space. So I'm just going to be, it's just going to be copywriting and specials. I'll probably use copy doodles quite a bit because I, I copy doodles. I, like the poozy. So I'm going to put specials on there, and I got some new products and new specials. I'm going to come up with a special for cool. family portraits, and I got a special for uh, uh, these not fairy shots, but they're like little princess shots and some other ideas. And that's going to go in here. Whoosh. Okay. So here's what I did, and if you're going to do something like this, here's what you got to do. So I need something else here. My piece of paper is missing. It doesn't matter. I can explain it. I went this morning to the post office, walked in with this, and I walked in with this. And I said, how much would this cost to mail? And she waited. She goes, 
Two stamps plus seven cents. All right, not good. I'm not spending two stamps if I can get away with it. How much if we fold it, put it in an old-fashioned envelope, which I don't have, yeah. but an old-fashioned envelope, she weighs it, she goes, that'll take one stamp. And I asked her, I said, well, what is the weight limit? She goes, 30 grams. And you could see on the scale, it was like 25 grams. I'm like, good, so I can mail this in an envelope with one stamp. Isn't it the same weight, though? Or is it the envelope that weighs more, the bigger envelope? The big, it's the size. Okay. Because of the size, it weighs the same, but the size drives the price up. Okay. Go figure. So anyway, so I'm looking at this with the envelope on the scale, and I'm like 25 grams. Right? Or it actually was like 29 grams, and the, the, the limit was 30. I said, well, if I add a little piece of paper on there, would that be okay? She goes, well, let's try it. So I took a little sheet of paper, you know, about the quarter of a size of an 8.5 by 11. I put it on there, and it went to 30 grams. I'm like, okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a little sheet of paper in here in my mailer, full color flyer, copy, and then an extra piece in there. So when they get it in the mail, and I'm, I'm really going to try and get these handwritten, hand addressed. Uh, we, we might print out labels. I'm not sure yet, but uh, I'm gonna. I got some students lined up. I'm gonna have them come in and handwrite it all. Can I ask you something? Would James you, has a question. Would you do this or not? Because you're folding it like this, right? <clears throat> I'd love to send them out like this, and you but got, I'm saving the money. So you got a crease here and a crease here. Yeah. Are you gonna put your content in here so that it's spaced according to this? So it's actually yeah. not cutting through. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a good thought. Because it kind of. It'd be kind of, layout consideration. It would be kind of neat for your layout to open it up, even though it's folded, it still all works. Yeah. So it's something that I would do because you got a nice fold here. So why not lay it out and you get so three kind of sections. how the masthead is the first thing they yeah. see when they pull it out. Just so you got three sections on each page. But I want to point something out. Okay. I mentioned handwriting, hand addressing. So when they get it in the mail, it's not going to be. You ever get like something from the cable company or the real estate guy or the insurance company? It just reeks of junk mail. Yes, I know. It's just like they get it, you know, well, really, do you, you take that and go, oh, I wonder what Joe, the real estate agent, has to say to me or what this insurance guy wants. <laughs> me and wants. the 5,000 other people he sent it to. <laughs> yeah, me and the 5,000 other people he sent it to. So, you know, so I want it to be like something that your grandma would send to you, <laughs> right? So they get it, and it's like, hand, cake and it's, a it's, <laughs> sure, you even put stickers on it. I would do that. And I actually used to do that back in the day when I was direct mailing a lot more. But, you know, they get it, and it's like, ooh, somebody sent me something. And they open it up, and the return address is going to be from my, myself and my wife. So it would be Rob and Tina Pravashi. It was personal. You know, if you really want people to open it up, you put something like photos enclosed. Yeah, do that, not that, do not bend. Do not bend photos and clothes. That really oh crap photos. Chance to win a free brand new Cadillac. <laughs> like, do that old camera touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's what I'm doing. So when they get it in the mail, then it'll be like, woo, look at that. And you know, there's no better place to market to than your past clients. By far, by far, by far when it comes to target marketing, that is the supreme top tier top level. Cool. So when you get it in the mail, it's going to be personal, and uh, you know that's what it's all about. Right on, that's right good. on, right on. So the idea that way. you know going to the post office, checking the weight, doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. Most people will not do that. Ask me how I, uh, how I'm doing on my newsletter. How are you doing on news, your newsletter? I'm not that good yet. No, I'll, I'll probably start this week now. I've got things written down that I'm going to. Uh, you got to talk start about. somewhere, right? I got a piece of paper gotta... with I just jot things down on it. Right? So, and I mentioned this, I think, to you last week. You're working on a newsletter. Yeah. Do your four file canvases in Photoshop. Yes. Print what you got out in rough, tape it together like this, you know. Yeah, I do that. And have it, and then you can write down ideas, you can jot down as you get ideas. And this takes a couple weeks to evolve, but it's not going to come to you in a flash. Yeah. The more you do that, the more work you put into it, the more the ideas will come, and the more personal and the more effective it'll be. Fine. Well, I mean, this must be for you too, like you just said, doing it. Don't think about it, holy crap, I'm gonna do a four page newsletter. I gotta sit down, and now I gotta do it all. Don't do a little bit here, a little bit there. Like you time. said, if you gotta print it out and you script, you know, you put a line with a box, and you put, I'm gonna put this here, and you build it. You build it. Then That's you do right. a little bit at a little bit. Next thing you know, say three weeks go by, and you're, it's all done. It's all done. But it doesn't seem like you did that much work. 
It started off, it looked like crap. Now I'm 90% yep. done. And, and it looks I'm really crap. happy with it. <laughs> but this here, uh, <laughs> on our way here, uh, I had James and I grabbed my little G11, G12. G12. So we're going to stop at the Decimony Foot Clinic. Uh, Julie owns the Foot Clinic. And last year I had done this photo book for her called The Trails. What she, what she did was a couple years ago she, she asked me, she said, Rob, I like to send all my doctors who refer clients to me a gift in December, at Christmas. And I'm, I'm stuck for ideas. And I said, well, she said, well, I want to do this book highlighting all the trails around the area. Can you do the pictures? And I said, sure. You're willing to print the book up, give me credit. Uh, I like that credit. That's a, nice, that's a nice picture. It's old. It makes it look really young. And you don't look like that anymore. But, you know, you're like the real, <laughs> you're like the real treat there. You're like the real estate agents, you know, you put a picture in there, it's 40 years ago. I get a whole page right at the start of the book. So anyways, the year goes by, she's very successful, all these pictures different, you know, in different areas in our city. So, you know, it kind of gives me some cred and all that. All these, I use high dynamic range, actually. Each picture is nine exposures, and I use photomatrix to really pull it together. Yada, yada, yada. And <laughs> then she says, well, let's do a winter one. Oh, sliding hills. So this winter, gone by, uh, I went and photographed a lot of the same areas in the dead of winter. Cool. I want to talk about that for a minute. I know we're going long here. Yeah. But I just want to talk real quick about that because winter shots, we get a lot of snow. But if it's not freshly fallen snow, it looks really crappy because the trees are bare. So I really, really wanted fresh, fresh snow, which really limited the amount of space and time that I had being the fact that I was busy in my studio and, and some mornings I would wake up and it, it would look like magical but I couldn't leave and go take pictures because I had like three or four shoots that day. So I was screwed. So, so you went on Google, you typed in images and you <laughs> stole all the winter images from other places? I really, I really was losing hope as to whether or not I was going to be able to get the images. And then as soon as an opportunity, like a Sunday rolled around and it just snowed and I had the day off and I'm like, good, and I ran out and I did a bunch. Towards the middle of March, it worked out. I had a couple opportunities. Some days were perfect. You know, a nice heavy snowfall. I had three hours free. I ran out. I ran around. And I got all the pictures I needed. And I just finished processing them. And she's uh, going to get the images from me soon. She's been asking me about them. And she's going to put out the same book, but it's going to be the winter version. So we stopped on the way here to get a picture of her and I with this book to put in the newsletter. One of the items that I'm going to talk about. You know what you got to do for this for this <coughs> winter book? Was this picture here? Let's take a picture of you with my big, huge winter toque on. <laughs> you know, with the flaps coming down. That'd be fitting for that. Yes, I think I have one of those hats. Okay, there you go. It's iconic. So. We'll do it outside. You Anyways. can be running and like in your bathing suit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> with a cool red couch. All right. So you want to talk about something else, or what? I, I don't like talking about hogging this whole thing. You know. No, I had nothing. Uh, what do we got there? Cancer. Cancer. Did you have cancer? Let's just leave it at that. No, no um, I was going to say um, completely off topic of what we were kind of talking about. But, uh, uh, you know, for everybody, I think, I think it's important that every photographer out there should pick uh, one or multiple uh, associations, nonprofit organizations, and donate all your photography to them, whatever they want. No charge. You're going to give them the time. I do that for the Northern Ontario uh, Cancer Research Foundation. And, uh, you know, I just finished a shoot. I did a half-day commercial shoot there. They're using the images for marketing inside. No charge. No charge. Did it all. Here you go. They're yours. Uh, cool. You know, they love me for it, but, you know, it's a good cause. Uh, I feel happy. I'm glad to do it. And I told them. I dropped the CD off yesterday, and I said, uh, one of my random acts of kindness is I brought them donuts. Donuts. And then I gave him the CD and I said, anytime you need a shoot, you just call me. Let me know. It's and it's not a one th it's not a one shot deal. It's yeah. this is ongoing. Ongoing. Call you me are if you there. want me every week to shoot there, I'll go there every week and You're shoot. You're their official shoot. photographer. Yes. It's yeah. a done deal. So yeah. did, did they have an annual walk? walk? They do. They've got all sorts of stuff like that. Which, you know, if I'm available I'll gladly go uh, uh, photograph and uh, yeah. and stuff like that, you know. So um, it's a great way to give back. I, I'm yep. a big believer in that too. You know, karma comes around, right? When people call me and want, to, want me to donate to some large international organization, I'm like, you know, I'd rather keep it in the community. 
Yes, that's very really important. what I, I like to do. Very important. I am probably going to. We get asked all the time. We get emails and phone calls all the time to donate gift certificates and stuff like that to um, to the charity or organization. And uh, we actually kind of stopped doing that. And I'd rather just donate the photography to them. You know. Yeah. So. So, so yeah. So I think that's it. We done? I think that's it. Man, we went long. Yeah. Well, it's all good. But, you know. Let's go. Uh, let's go get drunk and. Uh, we're out of here, guys. <laughs> All right. See y'all later. Happy birthday, <laughs> Burns, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to no BS photo success, 10 years old baby, happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday.